It's the GTN Show. Welcome back. At last, 2020 has delivered. It's been the race of the year. Challenge Daytona did not disappoint. And we're going to be going back over the race action from the weekend, looking into the highs as well as the lows. And this week, we are feeling extremely generous here at GTM because we have two giveaways. We are giving away a place for the Norseman Extreme Triathlon as well as some cask cycling helmets. And if that's not enough to get you excited, we've got a few motivating and inspiring photos of yours that we're gonna be sharing. The World of Triathlon has been dominated by the talk of this big race, Challenge Daytona. It was no surprise, really, we saw top-level short course and long course pros on the start list. And with a $1 million prize purse in total, it's no wonder that we were getting excited about it, plus the fact that there's been very little racing this season. So to see so many athletes being able to get over to America in what looked like good shape, it was bound to be pretty exciting. And as a result of that, there's not really been that much else going on in the triathlon world. So we're going to focus on this race today and have a good detailed look and look at some of the photos and video clips of what exactly went down over the weekend. Well, it's a women's race that went off first and we were expecting a fast swim. I mean, we have those ITU athletes who are known for their strong swims. Lucy Hall, didn't disappoint. She set out and no one managed to stay on her feet. Lauren Branson just a few seconds back. But then it was a bit of a pack, including the likes of Holly Lawrence, Paula Finley, and those strong swimmers who were a bit off, but Lucy Hall went out onto the bike first. However, the bike was obviously a pretty tough course, but it's a 20 meter drafting zone. So it meant that tactics became a little bit different to a normal race. It was completely flat, so there was no hills for a let up and the aero position became crucial. And this is where we saw Lisa Norden really benefit. I mean, she's been racing at the World Championships for Sweden in time trial, so she's got her position honed, and this course was all about having that aero position and being able to get past that pace line, because once a line formed, 20 metres, you had to basically overtake one person in 45 seconds. If there was a chain of people, you had to continue to overtake until you got to the front. So it made, when, you, when the athletes did want to go, they really had to be sure, and this played into Lisa Norden's strength. She actually came off the bike first, along with Paula Finley, but there were still a lot of athletes in contention, including some very fast runners, not too far off the pace. Well, at the front of the race, it soon opened up because very sadly, Lisa Norden actually had to withdraw and it looked quite emotional. She had a calf niggle that seemed to be okay, but after that amount of pressure on the bike in the run, she had to just, yeah, was brought back to walk and I think she was debating whether to walk to the finish. All the athletes were getting prize purse for finishing, but I think she realised that 18k was quite a long way to walk. And actually I should approach the distances. So the swim was 2k, it was an 80k bike and an 18k run. So a little bit different, actually weighted slightly more towards the swimmers than a normal half distance and obviously a bit less on the bike and the run. Well, Paula Finley took them um, advantage of that with Lisa not breathing down her neck and she just looked absolutely class. I mean, I haven't seen her race very often, but I was enjoying just watching her running. There was nothing exciting happening at the front. She was opening up that gap, but every time the camera came back, it was just a delight to watch an athlete who looks so in control and so comfortable. Um, but talking of an athlete who looks good running, Annie Haug, yes, she was one of the favorites going into this. She did make life harder for herself because she got a two minute time penalty for drafting and she took that straight after T2, I think. And um, yeah, it was apparently to do with the overtake and she maybe didn't manage to complete that overtake in the time allowed. So she set off a good, I think after that, it was about six minutes behind Paula Finley. So she had a huge amount to do over what's just an 11 mile course. It was four laps of the circuit for the run. And she closed, she had a lot of athletes to get past. She flew past the likes of Holly Lawrence, who we know is such a good runner, and it's just incredible to have seen that. And then she caught up with Laura Phillip, and it was a battle to try to chase down Paula Finley. But even without the um, time penalty, Paula Finley would have still taken the win, and it was an incredible performance. So Annie Hag was second, and then there was a battle still for the podium, or well, for the top 10, to be honest, but it was Laura Phillip who had the second fastest bike ride of the day, who managed to hold off Holly Lawrence closing her down on the run and she finished on the podium for third. It was Holly who was fourth and I just need to check for fifth. It was Amelia Watkinson of New Zealand and Sky Munch in sixth. And yeah, I could go on to the top 20 because the whole field was just incredibly strong. 
But in the men's race, there was even more drama, although not at the start, because the swim, it was strung out, but there weren't really any obvious packs, and the first group was pretty huge. They just kept coming out of the water. It's not surprising to see the likes of Alistair Brownlee and there, Javier Gomez and those ITU-based swimmers, but it was just a massive pile who were then heading out in this bit of a race to get onto the track for the 20 lap bike course. Because obviously it was then going to be 20 meters once they actually got out onto the track. So you saw a huge amount coming out, trying to jostle for places and having to ease off to find that 20 meter gap. And obviously they were keeping an eye on drafters as we saw in the women's race. We did have a couple who fell foul to that. Johnny Brownlee and Vincent Louis who were in that first swim group actually got given a two minute penalty, which they both, well, Vincent St. Louis took at the beginning of the run and then it was Johnny Brownlee who decided to take it later but that sadly put them out of contention although not on the bike but they were still riding incredibly strong and it looked like it was Alistair Brownlee he was very much taking control so he went to the front to start with set the pace it was like right this is my race I'm going to control it and we then started to see athletes getting frustrated with this kind of concertina effect of the 20 meter line and with so many of them in such a huge pack it was such commitment when they did have to ride through and we saw a few athletes going through to the front it looked like they were taking a little bit of a turn even with 20 meters apparently there's still quite a big benefit i've never raced something of that distance but it's incredible how it becomes so tactical. There's also a, a significant wind, so you had a headwind on one side and a tailwind on the other, and all of this was playing into it. But I think we started to see the um, just the stress on the body of holding that aero position so immaculately. There's no changes other than grabbing water, but even that, the athletes don't really move. So it was a matter of having your body conditioned enough to hold the aero position. Some of these ITU athletes aren't used to even riding TT bikes and sadly we saw one or two drop out on the bike due to injuries. So hamstrings, for example, were, were starting to go, but it was onto the run that we started to see it all just completely change. I must admit, I thought we were going to see a bit of a repeat from the from Nice, the Ironman World Championships back in 20, the half Ironman, sorry, back in 2019, when it became a bit of a race between Alistair Brownie and Gustav Eden. And it was Gustav Eden who went away with the run. However, he had obviously got this penalty to serve and Alistair set out first, well, just, just behind Sam Appleton and soon cruised through um, and went past looking just really comfortable. And it looked like he had everything under control and it wasn't too hot we know the conditions that Alistair would like and you know that distance he's very familiar with so it really looked like it, like it was a done deal a little bit like the women's race although very sadly we saw Alistair come to a walk um, hoped it was maybe something that he could walk off and it turned out it wasn't and he's actually had an injury that he's been dealing with and just decided to be sensible and not aggravate it and think of next year because obviously next year is a rather important one so this left the race then massively open and there were so many changes going on. We saw the young American Sam Long um, coming up to Rudy Von Berg and those two ran together for quite a significant part of it and we had uh, Sam Appleton running with Davis of Great Britain for a long time and they, those positions were changing and then we started to see Gustav Eden come through the pack absolutely flying and when he went past Appleton and Davis, it looked like they were jogging. We'd seen Alistair go past pretty convincingly. Well, Gustav, it looked like was just putting a surge to really sort of put the stamp down, but he didn't let up and he didn't need to. He just kept that pace going to the end and won by just under a minute. But there was an incredible run performance by one who was maybe slightly overlooked in the predictions, Matt Hansen. Now I was actually watching the race and towards the end, it looked as though he was putting on a sprint finish a bit too soon because his running gait looked like everything was going into it and he was flying past some very impressive runners. It looked like he couldn't maintain it, but then he just worked his way up through the field. He overtook George Goodwin, who'd moved up into second place at that point, and went on, carried on closing on Gustav Eden until the end, but ended up finishing second. It was George Goodwin from Great Britain who hung on for third, although Lionel Sanders, who'd had a disappointing swim, obviously not his ideal distance ratio with a longer swim and a shorter bike and run, but he really did put together a pretty good package and was closing on those final few minutes, but had to settle for fourth and then it was fifth and sixth. Let's have a quick look. Um, Rudy Von Berg finished in fifth and Sam Appleton managed to hold on for sixth. But yeah, just an incredibly exciting race. And I must admit, I don't often actually watch the full race and both the men's and the women's were incredible. So if you do have a moment to go back, you can even watch some of the highlights. It is a race to watch, trust me. 
Let's move on to some giveaways. Now this first one hopefully doesn't need too much of an introduction. The Norseman Triathlon. If you're not familiar with it, then I would suggest checking out GTN's video following Mark when he completed it in 2019. It's a long course triathlon of a traditional distance, but that's pretty much where the traditional normality ends. So the swim is extreme in the fact that the water temperature is Baltic. You start from a ferry in the dark, pretty much in the middle of a Norwegian fjord. And from the swim to the land, you then get on your bike and you head along these beautiful kind of mountains and it's still pretty extreme conditions as well as a lot of climbing. And then it finishes off with a breathtaking run that is so tough, it actually requires you to have a support runner with you. It's very much off-road and the whole thing finishes on top of a mountain. The 2020 event was sadly cancelled, but hopefully in 2021, we're gonna see athletes jumping off that ferry into the fjord again. Well, we see thousands of athletes entering the ballot for the Norseman Triathlon, but only 250 places are available. Well, due to the fact that the event has been rolled over from last year, there are none available. There is no ballot system this year. However, we have some exciting news for you here because there is an opportunity to get a slot for this incredible race. Yep, you heard me right. We have one slot available for you guys to win. So if challenge and adventure is your thing and you really want something to put in your diary to work for for 2021, listen up. This is being run through the Zolaris website, the title sponsor of Norseman for 2021. Just follow the link in the description below this video and importantly, make sure you select GTN under the where did you hear about this opportunity section. And it's worth noting that as a winner, you will be required to raise money for the charities AKTIV against cancer and 5K Your Way, both super charities. And again, all the info can be found in the link. Well, the entry for that will be open until the 31st of December, so best of luck. And as we are being super generous this week, it's time for our second giveaway. You might have noticed Mark and I wearing the Cask Utopia helmet in many of our bike and triathlon videos. Well, we are giving away three of those helmets. In actual fact, we do have one here. This isn't the one I'm, that's gonna be given away. This is a Kona um, limited edition one, but you guys have your, your chance to get your hands on one of these style of helmets. All you need to do is follow the link in the description, fill out the details, and just sit with your fingers crossed, because we have three of these to give away, and they will, the, well, the entries will close on the 21st of December, and we'll be announcing the winners in the new year. Okay, you know I mentioned some inspiration and motivation. Well, it's time to take a look at your photos and there's some wonderful ones. I was feeling motivated just selecting these. So here we go. This first one from Ben and it's his felt B16 with an Altegra cassette SRAM Apex from Gosport and Lee on Solent, which is in the UK for those of you who don't know. Anyway, it's his first ride back on the TT after a new paint job. Love it, you're not gonna miss your bike in um, transition with that one, are you? Wonderful, bright colors there. Our next one is another lovely outdoor cycling photo, a little bit different though. It's from Crawford and it's his Fuji Sportif. The lowest lookout point on the Pikes Peak Highway in Colorado Springs. He says, after Boulder 70.3 was canceled, my bike partner and I decided to pivot and go for Pikes Peak. I'm not sure if that's just sent to be a tongue twister for me. The 40-ish mile took around four hours and ascended 7,000 feet. Not the big effort I was hoping for to do after eight months of tri training, but still an amazing experience. Um, see you next year, Boulder 70.3, and maybe Pikes again. I'm just loving those photos. Beautiful scenery and a lovely looking bike. Thank you very much. Our next one is a race. It's sent in from Rachel and um, in Napier. She says, we were incredibly lucky here in New Zealand that we were able to race at the weekend. I competed in the Ironman half, which is an incredible event. The support and atmosphere was so nice. My first half Ironman distance event. I've already signed up again next year. Now I have to beat my time. Brilliant that you loved it so much. Your first one stepping up to that distance. And how exciting just to see people, crowds, and doing sport and look at that swim. Oh, it looks stunning, doesn't it? And yeah, good luck for next year. I'm sure you'll smash your time. Now we're going indoors. This is a bit more sort of realistic for us over here in the UK. Anyway, this though comes from Brian. It's a Cervelo P3 in Anna 
Annapolis, Annapolis, <laughs> excuse me there, yeah, Annapolis, MD, I should know, I don't, anyway, it says it's his little escape from the cold months, so I'm guessing it's somewhere in the northern hemisphere at least if he is escaping and some cool photos on the wall there and a nice tidy bike setup. Well, I think this is our final one this week. It's sent in from Denise and it's kind of the synapse this week, apparently, in brackets. Um, so obviously swaps the bikes in and out um, from Carson City in Nevada, USA. Now she says our swimming, pedaling and lifting area. And there's just something about this that makes me feel slightly uncomfortable because, well, that's a lot of water just being held up by kind of a little bit of canvas. And I would just, Having that outside is one thing. If you lose all the water, yeah, that's a bit of a nightmare, but you can refill it and you're probably not gonna flood your house. Whereas if that goes wrong, you're in trouble, aren't you? Anyway, I mean, that's not what I'm supposed to be focusing on, am I? It's an impressive setup and the fact that you can cycle and swim all in one room is just brilliant, yeah. Well, we're moving towards Christmas now, guys, and I want to start to feel festive and I'm hoping you are too. So I would love it if you could share any photos of you doing anything to do with triathlon, whether that's training, whether that's racing, whether that's just going out for a social jog, if you're doing it in something Christmassy or some Christmas decorations near you or you're passing a lovely Christmas scene, please share them. I, next week and the next few weeks, want to have a bit of a Christmas scene when it comes to your picks. And you've done a wonderful job for motivating and inspiring us. Now it's time to get Christmassy. So you can use the uploader that's on screen now. You can also find it in the description below. It's caption comp time and last week we rewound back to 2019 and WTS Hamburg with this photo. And we have a wonderful selection of caption suggestions from you guys. This first one from Bailitas. Too late to save you a spot with the pros. I liked it. Next we have Melinda Chohan. Hey, it's been so long. I forgot the swim comes first. Yeah, it has been a while, hasn't it? And our final runner up from Jodie Smith. 50 euros and you can sit on my feet. But the winner this week comes from Vincent Wieder or Vida. Hey man, can you give me a hand with this swim? Well, well done, Vincent. We will be sending a GTN cap to you. Just make sure you get in touch with your details. And this week we have a photo from the Daytona Challenge race. Christmas is getting pretty close now and you guys might be panicking for some last minute Christmas buys or maybe you just want to treat yourself. I would recommend heading to the GTN shop pretty promptly. You've still got time left to order things in time for Christmas. The limited edition t-shirt, however, I know is running out. I'm not even sure if it's still up there, but it's one of my favorites. So go and check that out. I think the link is gonna be on screen in just a moment. And there's plenty to look forward to this week. We've got some more tips coming from Joe Skipper. He's actually gonna be sharing his winter training tips. We've also got a swim video investigating how the rotation in your freestyle stroke actually affects your swimming efficiency. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you click on the globe to subscribe so you get all of our videos here at GTN. Give us a like if you've enjoyed the show and a couple of videos you might want to take a look at. We have, well, talking of Christmas, a little a few more ideas as we have our Christmas wish list. And yes, Mark and I are elves. That one can be found on screen now. And our final video to suggest is a cheap shoe versus super shoe. 